Tonight, this is brought to you by LW Pharmacy School. It is our motto to serve you through education. So that is what we are doing tonight is we are serving you guys through education through um, our PowerPoint, okay? Um, defining terms. So if you look at the PTCB blueprint, one of the things that is the very first thing on the PTCB blueprint is that pharmacology for technology, or for technicians, sorry, pharmacology is for technicians, okay? And with that being said, um, it is important for you to know what the defin or know the definition of pharmacology. Um, someone is saying that they can't hear me. Hopefully you can hear, might be on your end. Uh, but the definition of pharmacology is the scientific study of the action of a drug on a in a living system. Okay, so you want to know the definition of what pharmacology is and also what pharmacokinetics. Remember, as a technician, and I've gotten a lot of technicians that say, well, I have a pharmacist. Why do I need to know these things? You have to remember that as a technician, we operate in the healthcare field as a team. There's no big eyes. There's no little U's. There's no big person, no little person. And so we cover each other. We're there to support one another. And so even if your pharmacist is there, you you want to make sure too that you understand as well as much as you possibly can how to uh, define these terms. The next term is pharmaco pharmacokinetics. Okay, pharmacokinetics. One easy way to remember it is by ADME. ADME: absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination. This is how a drug moves throughout the body. Okay, how it is absorbed, absorbed, distributed metabolized and then eliminated out of the body. ADME is the definition of pharmacokinetics. Um, therapeutic equivalent. The therapeutic equivalence, and if you look down here, I have like a little image here that talks about um, the pharmacokinetics. And then if you come down right here, you'll see the orange book. Remember, there are reference books that we use inside of pharmacy, okay? And a lot of this stuff coincides and it goes along, it goes together. Okay, it's just sometimes that we're putting it in different compartments, but they actually go together. Therapeutic equivalence. When you think about a, the therapeutic equivalence or how a drug is equal, you always want to think about the orange book. Okay, the orange book is a reference book. It contains and it shows you how, uh oh, sorry, it shows you how the drug is uh, pretty much put together. So it shows you that it has the same chemical entity, it has the same quantity of active ingredients, it has the same dosage form, and it has the same ROA. ROA stands for route of administration. Remember when you're in pharmacies, we do use a lot of abbreviations in pharmacy. Okay, so you, you want to make sure that you familiarize yourself too with the abbreviations and don't always get so used to seeing it all the way spelled out. Sometimes it's not always like that. Okay, so ROA again is route of administration and the therapeutic equivalence of a drug can be found in the orange book, which is something that you may have seen either while you've been studying or if you've taken your test before, you may have had a question about the orange book. Um, the blueprint also talks about you knowing the different or the types of interactions, the different type of interactions that a drug can have with a living system. Okay, so you have the drug to drug interaction. The drug to drug interaction alters the action of another drug. So that means that we took one drug and then we took another drug and because we took this drug, now it's altering the action of this drug, okay? So if you've ever had something, you know, the doctor prescribes something and they ask you, are you taking any medications right now? They may ask the patient that. Are you taking any other medications right now that we're not aware of? And that's because they're trying to avoid a drug-to-drug -drug interaction. Any type of medication that a person can be taking can affect a new drug that they're getting ready to introduce into their body. The drug disease, okay? So this is another type of interaction that we could have. There's a drug to, to disease. Um, various diseases may inhibit the absorption of metabolism and the elimination of different drugs. So it's important, again, for the patient to list all of their conditions that they may be dealing with because the doctor wants to take those things in consideration when they are prescribing the drug, okay? Also, when your patient comes to the pharmacy and if they're a patient you've never seen before, you wanna make sure that you encourage them to fill out that patient profile. Remember, we're a team, and so if the doctor didn't catch that, that patient's condition, that's something that we can catch 
at the pharmacy and then give their doctor a call should that type of issue occur, okay? So again, it's imperative that we encourage them as technicians, hey, please complete your profile. Is there anything on here that we should know? Do you have any allergies? Do you have any conditions? Things of that nature. And even if it is someone that you know and you've seen before, you want to encourage them too because we want to make sure we keep updated information on file for these um, patients because things can change at any given time. You know, they might not have had something then, but they may have it now. So that's something, too, that we want to make sure that we keep um, in, at the forefront of our minds when we're dealing with our customers. Drug dietary supplements. Many herbal and dietary supplements have developed drug interactions with prescription drugs. Okay. So a lot of people say, well, I'm just taking the herbal, you know, I'm just taking the herbal meds. It shouldn't, it shouldn't affect but everything has their has its own ingredients. Every drug and any chemical that you put in your body or any chemical that the patient may be consuming has its own active ingredients. And we want to make sure that nothing alters the effect of what the doctor is trying to um, get done at that particular time. Drug OTC drugs. So this is a drug to an OTC drug interaction. Okay. We discount. A lot of times we discount the OTC drugs. I guess we do it because we're just like, hey, it's over the counter. It doesn't really matter. Um, but OTC medications may either increase or decrease the effects of a prescription medication. So again, if the patient is taking you know, something over the counter, we want to know what they're taking because we don't want that drug to OTC drug type of interaction. And again, everything that I've just covered is on your blueprint. Remember, your blueprint is giving you exactly what you need to study in order to be successful on this PTCD uh, exam, okay? Um, drug laboratory, types of interactions, we're still there. Drug laboratory, certain drugs may have an effect on the serum, potassium, and the creatine levels in the body, okay? Um, so we want to make sure, too, that if there's any type of um, lab work that is going on and things like that, potassium and stuff like that, that we talk about that. The drug nut nutrient, um, poor nutrition may affect the metabolism of, very, of various drugs. Poor nutrition, that means that if we're not eating certain things or if our diet is very slim and, you know, sometimes people are trying to lose weight and for various reasons they can't eat certain things and things of that nature. So that can also affect the metabolism of, of drugs. Um, quick, I'll tell you something really quickly. My son, um, he had a wing worm in his head. And so I went to the doctor that gave me this medication that Grusofen, I can't even really say it, uh, medicine, and it was like just a lot of it. And so they, the doctor told me, she said, when you give it to him, give it to him with something fat, with some type of fatty food. Um, there are foods, too, that help drugs to metabolize easier in the body, okay? Um, there are also some foods that will decrease the metabolism of a drug inside the body. The ultimate goal is to get the drug to metabolize in the body so it can do and disperse out in the, in the way that it should be so the patient can start to feel better. So um, that's something you can remember too. Now, drug to food. Improved absorption can occur with certain drugs taken with fatty food. We just talked about that. Decrease of drug absorption can occur when certain drugs are taken with food. So again, there are certain drugs that will decrease, I'm sorry, certain foods that will decrease and then certain foods that will um, increase the metabolism of the drug as well and kind of have a side effect for those customers or those patients, okay? Drug classification. And I'm just gonna check and make sure that everybody is still with me in my chat. Okay, everybody can still hear me very good. Um, drug classifications. This one is a good one. So many people are focusing on the top 200 drugs and you guys are trying to remember the entire drug name, the side effects, the, the, the generic name, the dosage form. You're trying to remember so much about a drug and the truth is, and I can honestly say this to you, it doesn't matter how long you're in pharmacy. It doesn't matter what, what your title is. You're not going to always remember all of the drugs. But what you can try to remember is the drug classifications. If you can remember the classifications of a drug, then you can pretty much remember what the drug is used to do and how the drug is going to affect the body, okay? One of the ways that I've been teaching my students to remember these drug classifications about the prefix, infix, and suffix of, a drug, of the drug name. Prefix, infix, and suffixes are used for remembering classifications. 
So here, if you look, the suffix of this drug is, um, for lorazepam, it's A-Z-E-P-A-M. A-Z-E-P-A-M. And then the other one is A-Z-O-L-A-M, okay? And I've underlined these and tried to make them stand out as much as possible. They are used to treat anxiety, okay? They are used to treat anxiety, and they're also benzodiazepines. They are classified as benzodiazepines. You guys are on the right path. Never doubt yourself. All it takes is one book and self-belief. If you can believe in yourself and study one book, you will pass it. I am a witness, okay? I am a witness. I have not only done it myself, but I've seen other people do it as well.